Well, good morning, y'all. <laughs> How's everybody doing? I see we got a lot of Texas girls in the house, California. Y'all are up early. This is nice. Free Spirit, if you pop on here, I know I said in the So Yeah Live that I was going to bump this to 8 o'clock, but then my girls from down under have to stay up later, and we just can't have that. So I don't mind getting out of bed at 6 in the morning. I hope you guys are doing well. If y'all see Guadalupe Gutierrez on here, Gutierrez, um, she has not emailed me yet to uh, collect her winnings from yesterday's live on Sunday, uh, September 10th. So um, if you pop, if you see her, um, if y'all would do me a favor and let me know. Hi, Marilyn. Glad you're here. Connie. Yeah. Um, good to see all of you. Hey, Dee Dee. Just... Um, so I don't know if you guys know this or not, but on the live in the chat, not in the comments below the YouTube video, but in the chat, if y'all do the at sign and then type the first letter of the name of the person that you want to visit with, whoever's name has that or whatever, you just kind of type it at without a space and put it on there, their name will pop up and you can click it. And what happens is, is then you can write a message. Now, everybody can see the message that you're writing, FYI. But when you do the at sign, the person who you're trying to chat or you're saying something to, their name will pop up on their screen in a dark orange. And that's pretty cool. So as they're watching the chat, it'll kind of pop out to them and go, oh. So if you guys see your name pop up in a bright orange, then you can say, oh, somebody's trying to tell me something. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Good morning. My name is Becky, and you are here uh, on my YouTube channel, Power Tools with Thread. This is just a, hey, free spirit. Sorry, you can't do eight o'clock, my friend. <laughs> I know I said I was going to with uh, on the on the So Yeah Live the other night. But um, yeah, then my girls down under have to stay up way too late. So, but yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, this is just a, a quilt retreat. We're just here to sew and visit and have our coffee. And uh, I will talk to you guys about what I'm doing. I got a Power Tools with Thread groupie in Florida. Well, good, Joyce. a girl. I like my groupies. Hey, Scotty Dog. Good to see you. So nice to see all you guys. Um, somebody wrote me, Peggy. She wrote me and she says, I have the perfect name for your virtual quilt retreat. The situation room. Love that. So, oh, Guadalupe is, oh, she emailed me last night. I didn't see it. Uh, I will check my spam and see. And uh, if not, because I looked at it this morning and I did not see anything. Uh, Carol's here from Orange. Ex excellent. Oh, Donna's from San Antonio. That's my home girl. Yeah. All right. My Texas girls are around. Absolutely. Hey, Valerie. Y'all, Valerie's in the chat. Um, poor Valerie. We were, we were gone over Labor Day weekend and she showed up over here ringing my doorbell. I'm like, who's at my door? <laughs> I didn't tell her. I'm so sorry. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. So this morning we are, I'm going to wrap up the uh, seasonal stitchy stars. So we have been working on this and my sweet husband just walked in the door. Hi, Keith. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so we're we're finishing up the borders on seasonal stitchy stars. I want to um, those of you that are sewing it, then um, just an FYI. So they've got it. They got some weird stuff here. So in most quilt patterns. They'll have you put this on, on your borders. They'll have you put the sides on first and then the top and bottom. And if you're going to do another border, then you do the sides on, you know, and the sides and then the top and bottom. Well, this one. So they have you add the sashing on the ends first, the last two strip A, which in my mind should have been when they were, when we were adding the sashing on anyway, they should have just put that there, but that's neither here nor there. So 
So they have you put on the ends, sashing, strip A. It's early, you guys. And then they have, so first we put on the sides, the long sides, and then we put the ends. No, put the ends, then the long sides. Then for the little da dashes, these little dash strips, okay? Then they have you put those on and then the ones on the end. So it's kind of backwards. And then the outer borders will go on. So the inner border is ends first, sides second. The dashed border is sides first, ends second. So that it all matches in a thing all the way around. And I did shoot a little video on how to do that. And uh, I didn't, I didn't kick, I don't have it here. I might put it up tomorrow morning. I meant to put it up. You guys are all talking amongst yourselves. I absolutely love that. I absolutely love that. I think that's wonderful. So as I said before, when we first started, if you guys do an at symbol, no space and the first couple letters of the person that you want to talk to or get their attention, it will pop up and you can click whichever person it is and then you can type. And that person's chat feed will get a little bright orange around their name. We don't see that, but that person does. And that way, it, as they're watching the chat and whatnot, they're going to see, oh, somebody's trying to tell me something. Everything you type is public. So FYI, all right, <laughs> just be very careful with that. That only occurs in the chat on the live. It, hi, Bernadette. Glad you're here. What I saw you mentioned that your glue gun sucks. Bernadette, I think it's one I picked up at the register at Hobby Lobby years ago. Let me see. I've got it right here. Maybe this is one that came in on Amazon. Yeah, I don't know. It's a no-name brand. It's just a piece. It mine's a piece of junk, too. It works good, but glue gun, low temp. It does not have, I don't know. It doesn't have any kind of anything on it, my friend. Sorry. One thing I do, though, this is a piece of Teflon. This is a an oven liner and I cut it up. I keep this in my box for my glue gun so that when I'm finished with it and I want to put it away, I just wrap it around the glue gun. It's still hot, you know, and I can set it in the little box that I keep it in so that everything is protected from the heat and it works great. I put it on my ironing surface. I only do glue gun on top of that little Teflon sheet. <laughs> I have a, the, another piece of that same Teflon sheet underneath my hot iron, too. I need to turn my iron on. Both of these. Oh, hold on. Excuse me. Oh. All right. So one other thing I want to tell you about the seasonal Stitchy Stars pattern. When you get your dashed border put on one side, okay, don't just blind so the other dashed border on the other side, because odds are your dashes are going to be off. They might look straight when they start. And then because there are a million little seams, you trashed your Teflon sheet, Sherry. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you guys, um, if y'all want to tell me something in the chat, there's a lot of you and one of me and I might be sewing and I might miss it. So if it's something important and you got a question or whatever, be sure to just shoot me an email. My email is below in the description box. So what I'm getting at is here. Let me pull this up. So I've sewn on my dashed border. Whoop. Wrong one. Let me strip. I'm going to start with this end. Okay. So I've, I've sewn on my dashed border here, okay? So as you go through and you look, like this one, this dash is almost even 
with this sas sashing strip? Well, I need to make sure that this one over here is at the same because you won't notice it while you're sewing, but when it's all said and done and you look at it, your dashes are going to be, you won't have the uniformity between them. And I think that's the goal of the pattern. If that doesn't matter to you, don't worry about it. Just go for it. That will bother me. I'll look at it. My eyes will cross if the dashes are off. So. Okay. Anyway. Uh, so I am sewing on the Brother PQ 1500. It is this close to being an industrial machine. I absolutely love it. It's my piecing machine. And this is a slimline light. All this stuff is below in the description box. If you guys have questions about whatever it is that I'm using, I have a little cart here with my mini pressing tools. This is a seam press. It has wool on it and a clapper. And then this is a little baby clapper. And this is a steady Betty. And this is a Cricut mini press. And this is what I iron with no steam. Let me turn on my machine, get my glasses going. I'm sewing with a 7511 needle, an Oregon 7511 needle, and I am using an Essential Pro Poly. It looks like cotton thread. This is from Connecting Threads. Okay. Okay. So the other day I sewed on the inner border and one set of the dashes. And today I'm going to sew on the other set of the dashes on the other side. And then that's going to be it for Stitchy Stars for me. The rest of it I will finish on my own because it is quite boring <laughs> to just sit and watch me sew long strips. But after I get done with this particular strip right here, I'm going to jump into my American Pie Block of the Month that I'm doing with my local quilt shop because I need to uh, get going on that. I've only done the first set of blocks. <clears throat> and I don't want to be in the middle of doing those and another set rolls in. So let me turn you guys down here. And you guys can visit. <clears throat> Hi, Annie. You guys are so... Hey, Rebecca. Glad you're here. Yep. Okay. Let me zoom in just a little bit. Tiny, tiny bit. And we will get busy here. Get this going. I'm real glad to have this done. We have a nice, long buffet that is like a family heirloom for Keith's family. And it's in my living room, and it's right under the big TV on the wall. And this will look great on there for fall. So I did lay out this table runner across my big cutting board and made sure that my dashes kind of lined up as best I could. All right. Tiki Island. Where'd I get the clapper? Okay. Yeah. So um, there is a link below my in the description. If you tap more, you might be on TV. If, if you're watching on TV, you guys will need to go to your phone or to uh, a computer and take a look. There's a, there's a link there. It's, it's to an Etsy shop. This gentleman is up in Fort Worth, Texas. And a very, very nice man. And he handcrafts these in his shop. They are fabulous. My son was thinking about making them because he's a woodworker as well. He makes all the ruler racks. But as a, uh, a busy father of three and a pastor with a growing church. He is very, very busy. So he, and he's in a PhD program. So he's got a lot going on. 
so he he was talking to me about it and he was like mom i can't add any more stuff and i said i get it that's fine oh also while you guys are working uh and you're pressing your blocks open if you see dark threads that are laying on top of a piece of light fabric go ahead and take a moment to clip those you don't necessarily have to clip off all the stray white threads on the back of dark but if you've got a dark thread that's found its way to lay on top of a piece of white fabric on the back do you and your long armor, if you use one, this is in any quilt project, y'all, trim that off, okay? As a long armor, there's nothing worse than going along and you see a big piece of dark thread, and then you've got to, after the fact, get in there. If you've sewn it down, oh, it's a nightmare. Okay. Hi, Carrie. You don't have the pattern. Well, that's all right. Working on a quilt while we visit. Sure. That's the whole point. You guys work on whatever you want to work on. When, when you go to a quilt retreat, you bring whatever you want to work on and uh, just sew and we visit together in the sewing room, just like we would if we were at a retreat. Because I know most of you are not going to be working on the next thing I'm fixing to put under my needles. So that's okay. We are just a bunch of like-minded souls here. Hey. Yeah, you guys. Oh, I love it that you Australians uh, are uh, finding each other. Yeah. We're a small community, and I love having the opportunity to bring everybody together. I know people who have uh, met on either retreats or shop hops or something like that and become the best of friends, and I think that's wonderful. It's hard to find stitching buddies because we are such a small niche. So we're leaving tomorrow for Baton Rouge. Today, when I get done here, I've got to pack the coach. My dining room table is already loaded down with dry goods that need to go. And so then we're going to get there. And I am taking a sewing machine camera and the whole nine yards with me. So we'll be stitching on the road. We'll be in Houston tomorrow. Uh, we'll get there tomorrow afternoon and we're overnighting in Houston. And then the next day in Lafayette. And then the next day we'll be in Baton Rouge. I'm taking y'all with me. I'm going to hang out in the coach with me, you guys. I'm kind of worried about my lighting. I got to work on something with that. I used to have one of those ring lights, but I might have to bring this slim line with me just to make sure I can see. All right. Okay. Now, when y'all are, um, back you up, turn you around here. <clears throat> when y'all are pressing this up, any of these borders, they're long and they're thin, okay? It's not like you got a big four inch border. I really, really, really recommend that you finger press it first and then very carefully. Don't swish, press it flat, press it flat pre like this, because these borders, you'll have more waves than the Gulf of Mexico, y'all. I'm telling you, crazy. <laughs> 
All right. Oh, yeah. Hey, would you guys do that for me? Would you hit the thumbs up? I love that. Look at that. We've got 224 stitchers in here at our little morning stitching, uh, our situation room. I love that, Peggy. If Peggy, if you're watching, I know you're, in, I think you're in California. You said you guys were going to get up at five and watch me. <laughs> you're probably already up anyway. Valerie tells me she gets up. A sewing tip. You were watching a YouTuber sew a legit kit. Well, she had a seam at the bottom that may cut. She puts a piece of paper over the seam. Ah, that's interesting. How about that? That's cool. Yeah, you guys come and go while you're getting ready to and from work. I love that. So this is great. Okay. So see how the dashes look level. That's what we're after. Level dashes. So kind of keep that in mind if you are making these table runners. Keep that in mind. Otherwise, it'll be zigzaggy. It, it'll give you that look and you'll be like, ooh, or, or not. It might not bother you. Hi, Mendy. Thank you for joining. That's very sweet. I appreciate it. Would I recommend pressing seams opener to one side? Okay. That's a really good, Annie. That's a great question. So, I am more of a to the side girl than I am an open girl. And the, the main reason is because I personally find it so difficult to nest seams that are pressed open. I also find it difficult to find the right spot to hit on a point from the back if it's pressed open. I know some people swear by it and they have great results and, and that's wonderful. I not so much. It's an extra step. It's a lot of effort. I have, I have a couple of things that I've done like that. So, all right, y'all. So this is where I'm going to stop on seasonal stitchy stars. Okay. I've got my border dash border on all that is left now is dash borders on the ends to put them all, all together. And, uh, and then the long strips down either side all four sides, the long strips. So I will wrap that up probably when we get back from Baton Rouge. Okay. That's just me. Yeah. You press open more than not Sherry. Absolutely. You know, it, it's a totally personal, I, I have difficulty nesting my seams. So all right. So now I'm going to work on another set of blocks for my American pie quilt. Let me put this over here. An American pie I'm doing is a quilt along with my local quilt shop. And here are the two blocks for American pie. So this is what I'm doing right now. And the first thing that the only thing I've got done so far are these blocks right here. Fabrics, it's on their website. So I, you have to make two sets of each in a blue colorway and the red colorway. Okay. And I've got the blue ones finished so far. So here are the ones that are in blue and those are done. Thank you, Anita. Yeah, I love these blocks. They're a lot of fun. Okay, so now I need to make up the red colorways. And I've got everything cut for these blocks. Now, these alpha bitties, these are not alpha bitties. These are alphabet markers. And this is an embroidery pad. These are an embroidery pattern from embroiderygarden.com. You can go out there and on it. This is from Reen Wilcoxon on embroiderygarden.com. And she has you, if you have an embroidery machine, you make these on fusible fleece. And then when it's all stitched out, you lay a piece of vinyl over the top of them. Okay. And now you've got your little letters, markers. They're a little bit bigger than the commercial brand that you can buy. Okay. So these are alphabet markers that you can make yourself. I've thought about going ahead and making like 
an expansion set with double A, double B, double C, and so on. But uh, I'm I'm not that. Uh... <laughs> so for this particular pattern, this is what I've got going on here, and these are great. They don't slide around at all. So now I need to get now. This pattern does not use a an alphabetic designator. I did that myself. So it's just easier for my brain to keep track of that. All right. So on this one, the base is the red double dot, the red dot, and I need two of each. So what I'm going to do is I lay out the, the base is the middle. So the red dot, I need um, gray dot. It says make two of each colorway and two more red dots. Like this one. Let me make sure I'm getting this right. Let me turn this this way. Yeah. Hush. All right. I got you. Red dot. Gray dot. Red dot. Okay. This is my brain. You guys got to get this right. All right. Then I need my two and a half inch squares. I'm going to need two here and two white. And I want to thank, um, it'll come to me, it's early guys, to be able to tell white on white, get a little black flashlight. I'm going to show you, this is really cool. So here's black flashlight. See those dots? That's the right side. Look at it from the wrong side. How about that? That's how you can tell, get yourself a little black light and you can see your white on white. Isn't that cool? Yeah, pretty neat. I'll be using that constantly. Okay, so there's that set. I need two white on white, four white on white for this set. Right here and right here. Yeah, pretty cool stuff, huh? I learned so much from y'all. You can also shine it on the bottom of your toilet. See how your boys miss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I have a friend of mine. She told her husband, you will sit down. <laughs> I'm not dealing with that. Am I doing this right? Yes. And two more white down here. Okay. I believe it was Kay that sent that to me. Yep. All right. Okay. I'm ready to go now. So this is the sew and flip method of quilt piecing. I want to show you guys. Yeah. You don't want to see that, Rebecca. I'm telling you. You kind of do, but you don't. The, the easiest way is grab yourself a rubber glove and a Clorox wipe and just kind of handle it. <laughs> That's why I never have a rug around my toilet. Okay. Yeah, this is what we talk about at Quilt Retreat, y'all. <laughs> this, is, this is it. So I am going to take my ruler. This is on the turn, sew and flip is what Pat Sloan calls it. So on my two and a half inch square, I'm sewing on American Pie, you guys. Let me get down here. I'm going to show you guys. We're going to get in real close. This is... This is a good concept, quilting concept. Okay. All right. Here's my two and a half inch square. They want you to sew a line. They want you to sew corner to corner, flip it over and hope it fits. Well, it won't if you hope. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to put my ruler corner to corner so I can draw a line. This is important. Okay. This is a friction fine liner. If the ruler's corner to corner, 
then the line I just drew is not. I hope that makes sense. If the ruler's corner to corner, the line is not. The line is next to corner to corner, which means one side of this square is smaller than the other. One of these triangles is smaller than the other. The smaller one is the one that's hanging out from underneath the ruler. So I'm going to put a little mark on that. That's the one we're going to cut off. You need to have the space in the fold right there for this corner to fold over and meet that one, meet the base shape. So I'm going to take a moment here and I'm going to mark all of these. When you are doing these kinds of blocks and you've got a ton of them, they always have you mark, you know, draw a line down side to side and then sew them on. Well, that's all well and good until there's the back and there's the back. They have, that's all well and good until you go to sew them on and your line looks, you can't tell which is the short side because the short side is the side you need to cut off. Otherwise, your triangles are going to torque. They won't fit. Your block will be wonky and you'll be all mad. And we don't want that because that's bad for our blood pressure, right? <laughs> we don't want that. And wrong side, wrong. Okay, good. I'm going to do all of these. Just get them going. Put my wrong sides up. See, yeah, this, isn't this awesome? Y'all, I can see clearly now. Wrong side. Wrong side. There we go. Okay. Yep. 1030 in Brisbane. Oh, okay. There was a lady on here the other day from Austria. That was cool. That was a first. Every once in a while, we get a Scotland on here. All over the world, you guys. It's wonderful stuff. Usually, too, I will have these, like, pre-done if I know we're going to be doing a bunch of them. But yesterday was busy, y'all, with the live. It was busy. That The only way you can get them exact is with triangles on a roll. Yeah, great by nature, that's true. That's another way. There are lots and lots of methods. What I'm, what I'm trying to convey is a concept in the garment sewing world called turn of cloth. And that's exactly what that is about. Because if you just mark them and set them aside without marking the short side, your odds of getting it right are 50%. And that's not, I don't like those odds. I like good odds. So triangles on a roll do work really well. I hate pulling off paper. That's annoying to me. I think, I don't know how many of these are going to get through today. As long as I get some through, I don't care. But I'll be working on these while we're on the road. <clears throat> now, I will not be here on Friday or Saturday because I'm going to be teaching and I've got to be there early in the morning. What about die cutting my triangles? You know, bell cats, my problem with die cutting is believe it or not, I'm cheap. <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> then I have to buy a die machine. Yeah, I know. And the problem is not the cutting. The problem is the stitching. That's the problem. Your machine does a scant quarter inch, Mary. Yeah. Somebody's bringing donuts. Oh. <sighs> Y'all, my favorite donut in the world. Put it. Put in the comment what your favorite donut is in the world. Boston cream with the chocolate on top. Oh, man. That and the plain Dunkin' in my coffee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, y'all. <clears throat> All right. So this one, 
Okay, so here's why this works. This is the base shape. My little red with the dot is the base shape. My piece I'm going to cut off. Did I mark the wrong? I think I marked the wrong. I marked the wrongs, wrong ones, y'all. I did. I marked the wrong ones. Because they don't fit. Okay. Hold that. I'll be right with y'all. <laughs> Whoops. I still need to cut those, but I'm, I just need to cut them with different things. I grabbed the wrong ones. Two and a half inch squares is what I need. Not two and three quarters. You got to be on your game with this pattern, y'all. Big time. Okay. So the concept here, this is the base shape. Okay, it's a two and a half inch rectangle. And I'm going to put the piece I need to sew and flip. The mark is up here in the corner. That's the piece that's going to be cut off. So I'm going to sew on the line. Remember, since the ruler was corner to corner, the line is not. And I'm going to sew on the line. So it still looks the same from the back. Okay. I don't have anything hanging over that doesn't, not supposed to. So now what you do is I fold this over so that this matches exactly. That matches exactly. And I put finger press it. Okay. So I've got a nice point up here. I got a nice point down here and from the back, it looks the same. So we've maintained the integrity of the base shape. Okay. It looks identical from the back. This is not up here or out here or anything. Do not cut this off before you press it. Because if you, if you don't press it first to tell it where you want it to be, it won't know where to go and you're going to get a wonky block. So I'm going to show you real quick. I'm going to lay this over my seam roll and I'm pressing it down. I put my little clapper on it. Okay. So now it knows where I want it to be and I'm going to, now I'm going to cut it off. Okay, and now it looks identical. Okay, it's just two different fabrics. So if I put it up against the one, this little partner here, it is still maintaining the integrity of the base shape. That's what you're after. And you do that by making sure you cut off the short piece. Put, put a mark on your short piece of the triangle. If you're going to sew and flip, this is, this is just me, y'all. You can do what you want. There's more than one way to quilt. But in my world, th this works. So you're taking into consideration the turn of cloth, which is that little gap. And you, no, I just use you. You're not cutting off. And when you're sewing a million of these, let's see, these go over here and these go down here. Okay. Yeah, when you're doing a whole bunch at one time, when you've got them marked, you don't have to question. Yeah, some people like the triangles. On what are you guys doing? Yeah, you guys. Oh, thank you, Norma. I appreciate that. You keep all those little off triangles. Yeah, um, my life's not like that. <laughs> I don't. Yo, I don't. I don't. I just don't have time for it. 
I just don't. Wish I did, but I don't. Alrighty. And this one, these go up here. This goes down here. Okay. Just have to keep remembering which one I'm doing. And I do have diagonal. Oh, for crying out loud. Let's see what I did. <laughs> Whoops. I'm like, where's my other rectangle? Where's my seam ripper? Aha. Uh -huh. I sewed them together. <laughs> Oops. That happens. No big deal. Your, your seam should be as easy to pull apart as it is to put together, if not easier. Just like that. That's what I was talking about last night with these new seam ripper ends. If yours doesn't work that well, then you need a new one. Just the end. Okay. Yep, done that. Yeah, two and a half is about the smallest I keep too, Gray. Um, if I'm going to keep any. But these little bitty pieces, you know. And I thought about putting them like in dog beds. But don't you know, most shelters now only want whole blankets. They don't want anything that's got batting in it because some of those dogs are so disturbed that they chew everything and digest it. <laughs> my, my son's dog likes to steal socks and chew them. She's a labradoodle and she swallows them. Fortunately, they haven't had to take her to the vet yet. But Ryan has had to reach in and pull out a sock. And sure enough, I was missing a sock. And I, in my suitcase, and I went and um, went looking. Now, she had it somewhere else in the house. She hadn't eaten that one. But I was like, oh, we're missing a sock. I did not want to be the cause of that vet bill. Okay. I need to be uh, trimming these. Figuring out what's where here. Your sister does crumb quilts. Cinnamon anything. Yeah, I love cinnamon. That's good. I was watching Frugal Fit Mom last night on YouTube, and she did a Dollar Tree cookie review, and she said that the Thin Mints at the Dollar Tree for a buck twenty-five are like perfect dupes. She calls them duplicates of the Girl Scout Thin Mints. Yeah. Yeah, I don't blame you. You don't have to keep those little pieces, y'all. Don't let anybody guilt you into keeping things you don't want. That's how we end up with too much stuff in our spaces. You know, you don't have to. Good morning, Jacqueline. Thanks for joining. Your first one. Well, we just kind of hang out here and do whatever. Get something to sew. Visit a little bit. Your daughter. Oh, yep. Golden doodles. Those things, those doodles eat a lot. I don't know what it is. Here's Frito, y'all. Good morning, Frito. Hi, baby. There's my Frito. She's my girl. Hello. Yes, it's good to see you. Hi, sweet babies. Yes. F-R-I-T-O. This is my little Frito. She's a good girl. Yeah. We got her from the no-kill shelter here in our local county uh, back in March. We lost our blue dog in March. <laughs> that was so sweet. And um, they had named her Daisy May. She did not answer to that at all. And because of her little black mask, I, I thought she looked like Frito the Bandito. So <laughs> her name is Frito. 
Let's see here. These are ready. These, okay, good. I'm trying to figure out what I got going on here. Yeah. No, Betsy, don't, no, you don't have to keep your scraps. I know, I know a lot of y'all are closet scrap scrappers. You just pff, trash them. I don't blame you. I don't blame you a bit. Nothing wrong with that. You do you. You know it? You know, I, I watch a lot of Minimal Mom, too, and she talks about bandwidth. And bandwidth is, or, you know, and, and uh, Dana K. White from Slob Comes Clean, she talks about clutter thresholds. And it's the same concept. You know, you can only manage what you can manage. And if you can't manage something, like I can't manage millions of these little pieces, okay? I can't manage those. I, that's too much. It's too much work for me to even think about what to do with them and then to do something with them. I do, some of them go in the trash, those little bitty ones, because they're not two and a half square. I'm not fiddling with them. Um, if I, if I can manage them, I will, if they're small enough and I've got fabric, you guys, that uh, goes into the scrap bin and the scrap bin gets donated to my local quilt store, Fiberworks in McQueenie, Texas. And they sell them by the pound. And if they want to do that, that's great. Okay. I'm glad they're going to a good home. I've got other fabric that has gone into a black trash bag because I know I don't have a pattern I want to make with it. It no longer brings me joy. <laughs> So I'm giving myself permission to put it in the black trash bag and I donate it to like the local, um, the Medina Children's Home. There's a collection station here in my local area. And if they want, they can have it. And you guys, I have not had a moment's regret of anything that I have donated or gotten rid of where I look back and said, Oh, I wish I wouldn't have done that with the exception of a big heat press that I had one time. But I, even so I don't have room for it here. So it's okay. If you don't have room for something and you don't have a plan for it and it doesn't, you look at it and you're just like, Oh, what am I going to do with that? Y'all let it go. No guilt. It's okay. You will find yourself feeling freer and better for it. Yeah, Betty Ann, absolutely. And those of you that want to play with these, you know, if you want to pay the shipping and y'all want to ship them amongst yourselves, knock yourself out. That's great. Nothing wrong with that. It's like finding a husband, y'all. There's a lid for every pot, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. This is good. Watch, watch. Got a handful of little triangles. In they went. I'm okay with them. I don't have the bandwidth to fiddle with that stuff. Okay, these two are finished. And these go here and these go right there. Okay, good. I got a few more to do. Then we're going to wrap it up. Let's see. I want to make sure I get this right. What direction? Down here. Okay. This is the side that's going to be cut off. I know that's a controversial subject, you guys. Just, it's okay. I can take it. I got big shoulders. Don't you worry about it. My problem is there's too many projects in the world that I want to make. And the way I quilt has changed. I used to quilt when I first started, you know, I was watching Jenny Doan 
and I was buying all these pre-cuts. And I rarely use pre-cuts anymore other than a fat quarter. Rarely. Now I'm buying quilt fabric for projects I want to make. So I've got loads of pre-cuts. I ain't getting rid of those. <laughs> Oh boy. Y'all, the nicest thing happened. I got I gotta share this. So I was talking to my son the other day, and he's a pastor up in Colorado Springs. He's the um, head pastor at Peak Bible Church. And they've got a YouTube channel if you guys um, want church on Sunday. He's got Sunday school at 10:30, I think, and then service starts at 11:30 Mountain. Anyway, he was gonna go get some goats. Uh, there was a one of their church family members uh, had some goats and they were giving them away. And Ryan is on 40 acres. You're on the 800 year plan, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so anyway, he's on these 40 acres and um, he's mowing a lot of it, shredding a lot of it. They've got chickens and all of that, but um, he decided he wanted some goats. So he gets in the truck to go get the goats Friday before last and his radiator blows. And y'all, he's, 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 this is mom, no goats, the radiator, you know. So um, he takes it over to a very reliable repair place there in Colorado Springs. How come this one doesn't fit? All right, look, y'all, I sewed this one wrong. Look at that. See how that's off? It's not reaching. It's wrong. And so instead of torquing it to force it, I'm going to unstitch it and fix it. I don't know why it's wrong. It looks right to me, but it's not, it's not obvious. Oh, I see why. I started the corner off a little bit up there. So anyway, he takes it to peak automotive repair. Everything's peak or something because of Pike's peak. So he takes it to peak automotive repair and um, drops it off. And during the fix, the repair guy, when he was pulling the radiator, he poked a hole in the air conditioner condenser. So he had to replace that himself because it was his mess up. But then Ryan goes to pick up the truck. And the, the radiator was supposed to be like $750 to get it fixed. There we go. That's better. And the guy's got a list of all the stuff that he fixed. There were little wires that needed replacing and there were little valves that needed. And there was a little, I don't know, whatever. There was like 19 things that needed done on this truck. Because it's an old truck. It's a, I think it's a 2010 and it's got almost 300,000 miles on it or something like that, right? So he's, he's listening to this guy go on. And then the guy tells him, you don't need to worry about this. Your bill has been paid. A benefactor or a group of benefactors at his church paid the bill. Y'all, there's only, he's got a flock of about 80 or 85 and that was just so incredibly nice. Now he's got an emergency fund, the family does. But that was just so incredibly nice for that to happen. And he was very grateful. So sometimes you just don't realize how you affect people but it was a blessing. Yes, Becky, it was a blessing. Becky, we actually have the same name. My son's last name is King. <laughs> from, from, I was Becky King from uh, 83 to 89. <laughs> and then life happened. Okay, all right, y'all. So we've got, I've got the 
red, one set of the red colorways for my um, framing units are finished. That turned out great. So let's see. Uh, this one matches here. And this one matches here. And this one matches here. All right. So I got one set of the red colorway done. All right, you guys. The dogs are being fed. It is 8 o'clock. We have been on for an hour. Yes, free spirit. God is good. Absolutely. All right, y'all. This has been fun. We have done our hour, and um, I'm going to be packing up the coach. I will see you guys tomorrow. We've got a new name. It is the Situation Room. It will be our virtual quilting room in the morning. So I hope you can come back and visit with me. You guys have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you soon. You guys go sew something. Bye.